What up, y'all? I'm Speedy, and this is 360 with Speedy Mormon. And today I am joined by a platinum hip hop group. We have JT and Young Miami, and together they are the City Girls. City Girls, what's up? How y'all doing? Good. That don't sound like y'all good. Y'all good? <laughs> Wait. Yeah, if you sound like we good. Yeah, that didn't sound really like I was feeling, good. I don't know. Like, I'm feeling. Are you not good? Is that new, neutral. Like, is I'm saying it right? Neutral? Yeah. Neutral. Neutral. <laughs> neutral. I'm feeling, feeling neutral. like, I don't know, in between. <laughs> like, Why? Why not one way or the other? Why right in the middle? I don't know. I feel like I just really came out the house out of glam and all of that, so I really ain't get my energy going. I, I don't okay. know. Like, I appreciate the honesty. Because yeah. most times, even people ask me, I be like, yeah, I'm good, even yeah, if I'm not good. Like, but saying you're neutral is, is a vibe. Yeah. I fuck with that. And sure. Young Miami, are you good? Are you neutral? Where you at? I'm just chilling. you just chilling? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you said what? I said she getting angry. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm just shit. I'm just I'm cool. I'm good. You're cooling. Okay, cool. Well, right now we are in sunny Los Angeles. It is on the other side of the country from where you guys are from. But what do you guys think about LA? Do you like LA? Is this somewhere you guys spend a lot of time? Um, LA is very Hollywood to me. It's like no food. It's just I don't know. I feel like it's a place of work. Okay, but it's I a business. Place I won't come here for a vibe. No. Okay. Mm -mm. And how about you, JT? I live here. <laughs> I moved here, so I like it. I actually like it. I don't really go out like that unless I'm working. I feel like my lifestyle is like a party. So to live somewhere that I can like chill a little bit, it's cool for me. I like yeah, it. Yeah, it helps with the balance. It balances out my life. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. where are you living now? Are you in I Miami? I live in Miami. Still. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. How is that dynamic for you guys? It's a different time zone. So when y'all are talking. Are you always up or, or is she we be sleeps up at the same time? She don't never go to sleep. <laughs> like, she be fucking with me and I be sleeping. I be like, girl, what the fuck? <laughs> and it's hours? 3 o'clock there sometimes. I be like, girl, it's 3 o'clock in the morning and like, relax. No, she be up. She I be up. I got kids. So yeah. I go to sleep late, wake up early. Okay, that's motherly duties, though. Yeah, you so. know, motherly duties. Well, let's take it back to the beginning for a bit. In Miami, you guys grew up together. Uh, Carroll City Middle School is where you guys started at, and that's mm -hmm. where you guys met. What was it like there? What what type of I, I've heard that that you were the it girl of Liberty City and that you were the it girl of Opalaka. Is mm -hmm. is this accurate? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, what, what what was life like for you guys back then before you were the city girls? We was just always some girls like. Oh yeah, we was always in a mix. I'm not gonna lie, like we was. That's why it was so kind of easy for us to like become rappers because it was like everybody already knew us. It, nobody can't say we not real Miami. Like if you go to Miami, you ask me, you know, Carisha, they're going to say, yeah, you ask me, no, no, JT, yeah. Like they're going to have a story to tell about the city girls. It's not like we not from Miami. We from the outskirts. No, we really Dade County. So yeah. Like, yeah. And, and do you feel like that helped you with the stardom because you were always so used to being popular already? Yeah. Because I feel like when we dropped the song, that's what like when we had our... Um, the performance in Miami, everybody came out and fucked with us because it was like, we was already Carisha and JT, we was just rapping, so. It was like, let me see what them hoes really rap. <laughs> let me see what them hoes really talk about. So I feel like we got a lot of support from our city to like push us. Like, it was already packing out in our city. Like, our friends is really popular. The boys who we knew in the city was really popular. We knew, you know what I'm trying to say? So the clubs was packing out. So it made it very easy for us because we had a lot of support in our city. And I feel like that's what a lot of artists really need. Like yeah. the support from home first exactly. to get it spr spread it out. Yeah, <laughs> and just to spark you before mm -hmm. you go nationwide. And I know that in the beginning of this all, before even the music, JT, you had a few regular jobs. You worked at the Sequarium, Whole Foods. Burger King. <laughs> I always got fired. What happened? <laughs> yeah. What's up? I'm here now. <laughs> what what were you getting go. fired for back then? Oh no, from the Sequarium, my cousin had got fired and then this girl had got fired. She had told like my cousin got fired first. They been wanted to get rid of me because they found out my cousin had a gun charge, but they was like, okay, I'm gonna let her stay. I ain't gonna Then my friend Tanitra, she never used to do her job. So they fired her and she said, I'm waiting on um Jatavia to take me home because I had a car. They said, oh, she could go too. Oh, no. It was like that. Oh, you just caught a stray bullet. Just, yeah, I caught a stray bullet for the secret in Burger King. At the time, I was doing my little fraud thing. I was just using it as a cover up. I kind of left them. They was giving me like $40 a week. And then Whole Foods, I don't know, they just was hating on me. But I fuck with Whole Foods now, but they was just some straight haters at that job. Okay, but you made it out. You made I it did. out. I did. Miami, you worked for a very, very short amount of time at a wax. Place? Yeah, because my, my daddy's girlfriend, he said go with her now. She was like 
um, the manager, so she hired me. And then try that shit lasted for like two weeks. <laughs> what happened? Why was the team? They fired me too. <laughs> do shit. What did you do wrong? I don't know. I guess I was black. I don't know. You were making uh, appointments or something? Yeah, I was sitting in the front desk making appointments. But damn. I didn't even give a damn. But you let it, but look, you let it go and things obviously became way better. JT, what can you tell me about learning to drive in Juanita's car? That's her baby daddy. Mama. That's mama. my baby daddy, yeah, mama. That's so ghetto. Baby daddy. <laughs> That's her baby daddy mama, son, grandma. That's her son, grandma, but her baby daddy mama. Yeah. That's what I was trying to say. Yeah, she had a Buick, like a gold Buick. And Quanita let you be yourself at her house, like be free. You could do whatever you want to do at her house. And I didn't know how to drive at the time. And I don't know how the fuck she gave me her car. But I ended up from Opalaka Way to 79th Street. Did not know how to drive. It was like horrible. <laughs> and I had to pick up somebody so they could help me. Because every time I would stop the car, I would throw it in park instead of the brakes. So right. It was just a horrible experience. But thank you, Quanita, because I'm driving now. <laughs> yeah, look, you drive now. You have quite a few nice cars. Uh, Miami, you learned to drive with Melvin. Yeah, that was that's my um, auntie, baby daddy. It's a lot of He's so daddy. Shout out to the baby daddy. <laughs> that's the reason why all of this driving. He is was here. so damn crazy and young and wild and reckless that he had a rental. Like, let me hold your car. He like, get in it. When I got in the car, I went to McDonald's. I know what the fuck I was doing. I just went, <laughs> <laughs> I knew I went to McDonald's and came back because McDonald's was like around the corner, and that's how I learned how to drive. Just get behind that wheel. That's crazy. But sometimes you got to learn by fire. You, know, you just got to yeah. jump yeah, in the deep end. Yeah, but that's crazy. Like, that's the same thing I'm thinking. Like, that's crazy. Yeah. Like, that's crazy. I was gonna Hell yeah. Shit. I ain't know how to get <laughs> up or nothing. Right. But you risked your life it, and it was a success. I mean, growing up in Miami, you got to get out there. JT, you guys used to spend a lot, or you used to spend a lot of time at Miami's house. Right. I hear that she had terrible snacks at the time. And she, you said that, uh, you, well, first of all, you used to eat all her snacks and uh, that you said that she's like a grandma at this time. Oh, her, her house, like recently, yeah. Oh my God, I think Carisha still, I, I, I think that she got a little better with her kids. <laughs> I think that Jai probably able to tell her what type of snacks to get now, but before that, oh my God, Carisha's type of person have lays in her house, like <laughs> plain, plain lays. lays yeah, like, because I don't eat sweets. It just but lays is not, that's Yeah, that's chip. like the plain chips, yeah, they good. Mm -hmm. that, what's your ideal snack? Hot fries, hot sausage. In the Slim Jim. Okay. Is that not busting for you? But it was in her house. I don't know why she didn't <laughs> have it in her house. What type she of stuff? She had a variety pack, the free chips. I call them free chips, the, like the Cheetos, the, the hard ones, the Fritos, the no flavor. Like she They're had the a, best chips. The, like, uh, she had a variety chips. I, uh, uh, I call them the free chips. The free chips, the one that you're going to always find when you go looking for something. They're never out of stock. They never out of stock. Because nobody really like them nobody like that. Nobody Except for <laughs> in Miami. Mm -hmm. That's bad footy. <laughs> Now, JT, you went away right as In My Feelings came out. Mm -hmm. What was that like, having such a huge pivotal moment of your career and then you not being able to be out for that time? Going in jail, I didn't even know it was huge, so I won't even say that it was, I knew that it was a huge moment. I just knew You that didn't I, know that getting a Drake record? No, I knew that getting a Drake record was big. Don't fuck that up. Don't, <laughs> what I'm saying is the record was big, but I'm saying us as a whole, like if, I didn't know what it was, how far that was gonna take us. Like, right. I just went straight to jail. I had a lot on my mind, but that, of course, that was, that made it kind of like the happiest day of my life to the saddest day of my life. Like, yeah. a mixed emotion day, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And Miami, what was it like for you? Obviously, when JT was away, a lot of that burden fell on you. Mm -hmm. Crazy, crazy time, I imagine. Like I said, one thing about me, I'm gonna get out there. I just got out there. I just had to keep it afloat. I just felt like I had to do what I needed to do, and that's what I did. Yeah. And what were those days like, though? It was like a roller coaster. Some days it'd be okay, and then some days it would just be like, man, this shit's just too much. So you know, it had it's like good. And it it was like a balance. It had its good days and its bad days, but it was like a roller coaster. Now, someone who had a similar situation like this was the Migos, and Offset had went away during a pivotal time in their career. Mm -hmm. And one thing that everybody really respected about the Migos was while they were away, they were still performing, but they still saved offsets third of the profits and the money while he was gone. So when he came home, he had something to come home to. Mm -hmm. Did you guys have a similar dynamic with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had money, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she said, uh -huh. Like, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, I came home, yeah, had some money. <laughs> Good. <laughs> 
What was that first um, coming home to money feeling? You know, because when you went in, you were at a, it was a different moment. Um, well, I didn't, I, I, I will honestly say, like, I didn't really splurge because, like I told you, I was in a halfway house. And, like, a lot of the stuff that I did get that was expensive was some gifts. Like, mm -hmm. she bought me a chain, P bought me a chain, P got me some teeth. <laughs> yeah. Like, I didn't really pay for nothing expensive, so I really didn't splurge. Like, everything that was expensive of mine, I got gifts, mm -hmm. gifted, so. Do you feel like, to the public, you guys exist without each other? Because a lot of times I'm with groups, and they'll see, just to use an example, they'll see you and they'll be like, where JT at? Or they see you and they ask yeah. where Young Miami is, as if y'all aren't two completely separate people. All the time. Does that happen to you guys? Yeah. Like, how often does this happen? It's like every time I see somebody, they be like, where Carisha? <laughs> they be like, where Carisha, girl? I be like, she home. <laughs> do, they, do people expect y'all to just be together at all times? Yeah. Because whenever like I'm doing something and she not there, they be like, oh, why she ain't there? It's like that girl got her own fucking life. Right. Mm -hmm. And y'all live in two different parts of the country. Yeah. yeah. So they need to just accept the fact that y'all have your own separate lives. We grown as fuck. Yeah. yeah. We two grown ass lady and I got kids. She got kids. Right. <laughs> you do. Obviously two kids right mm -hmm. now, no kids. You recently tweeted that uh, if you do have kids, that every Mother's Day you would like a new car until the kid is 18. Mm -hmm. And then Uzi tweets, I ain't having no damn kids. Child. What's the status? Is, is kids coming with the new cars every year or no kids? I got one car already, so I got 17 more cars. He got 17 more 17 cars. 17 more cars to, to go. Mm -hmm. So he got did, 17 more cars to get. Can the cars still come without the kids or is that a part of the package? <laughs> it was literally a joke, kind of, but I feel, what I'm trying to say is, like, I feel like mothers deserve so much, so I was like, every year, I need a new whip for every year I'm raising that child. Oh, I get it. Yeah. I, I, oh, I'm understanding. I'm just saying, you know, if you decide not to have kids, do you still get the cars? No, I don't care. Okay. I buy my own car for mm, 18 years. Talk to that's him. the case. What's okay. Up? You guys are just coming off of the BBMAs, the Billboard Music Awards. We watched you guys walk the red carpet, and we also saw you guys present an award. Why the, why the face? We, I already saw her face. Because. <laughs> what was it like? What was the experience of the Billboard She's Awards? She's the funniest bitch ever, dog. Why? She's so <laughs> fucking funny. <laughs> the experience was funny as fuck from the red carpet to the stage. Uh, me and Carisha laughed that whole day. When, when did the, the humor start? When It started from the red carpet. <laughs> it was just a lot going on. Like my wardrobe was fucked up. So it was like, I was kind of like fucked up. Then it started when we got on stage to present the award. She forgot her part. <laughs> I forgot, cause how I forgot my part, let me make this real clear to the world. I am blind, I cannot see. So it's a teleprompter and I can't see. So my intentions was not to get on stage and squint cause I have a bad habit of squinting. So I try to remember my lines off the top of my head. On top of that, I was hella nervous. Like, that was a real stage. Like, when I walked down, I'm like, damn, it's a real <laughs> stage. <laughs> no, because so, we didn't have, like, no rehearsal, and then she didn't get the script until, like, the day of. Mm. So it wasn't, like, something that we practiced or rehearsed. Sure. Mm -hmm. So it was just, like, we got out there, and we was like, okay, we're going to read the teleprompter, but she can't see. And she was and like, she was dead serious. Like I, I didn't get. You know how you get like you get a sense of like laughing. Don't that bitch is up there like this. Straight face. Straight oh, face. Super. Dead serious. I'm like, Focus, well, God like, damn, um, it was, teacher. It was, it, was, it was live, and I was trying to be serious. I was trying to be serious. She, she, she was professional. She was like, she had to say a whole other part. She was like. In the RB <laughs> and the winner. And, is, and I'm like, no. <laughs> That's not the part the yet. No was so stern, I felt like yeah, it was my like, mom I telling was me. Like, God damn, uh, <laughs> Mrs. Teacher. I was gonna say, girl. <laughs> so so you walk out, you see this stage and the mag how I see big this of a big dude. glass ass stage <laughs> and all these lights and all these people looking important as fuck. I'm like, hold on now, wait a minute, let me go back to the back. It was just a lot. That, that I'm. That was the. That was. I was so nervous and full of joy at the same time. Mm -hmm. Like it's a a feeling I can't explain. Like I was so fucking happy and then I was just so fucking nervous. So it was like a mixed feeling. What was it like being up there next to her, knowing that you had your lines down pat, Girl. but she wasn't quite 
at your level. I am. I shoot down. Pat Needy, we was with to say, okay, you going to say this part. I'm going to say this part. Oh, we just go. We were supposed to just, I was supposed to have her back because she had my back because it was like, okay, I might not say this part right. So you say this yeah, part. Yeah, that's what she going to tell me that. That's <laughs> behind stage. She's going to say, and when I don't say the part right, you're going to pick up and say, but bitch, when I fucked up, you didn't say nothing. <laughs> Let and me then forget. it was so funny, right? Because I was standing there, I was just like, no. No, but in my head, I'm like, okay, is this the part? Should I say it? I'm just like, you was like, Shit, I don't know. <laughs> I said shit. And then I everybody know. bust out laughing. I'm like, okay, I'm looking over here for the car, but she got the car in her hand. I was just like, okay, I just want to walk to the back and say, fuck this. <laughs> y'all, made it, y'all made it work. And you made it work because mm-hmm. then they rolled on TV, on the telecast, they rolled to the nominees and we saw the nominees. Mm-hmm. And it all panned out. Mm-hmm. And it, it came. What was your immediate reaction after that when you got backstage? Were y'all, were y'all laughing at all? Or was it like, damn, man. You know, that... What did we do after? Oh, they, um... We walked to our stage, and the first person we had seen was like Megan. Oh, yeah. And she was like, Girl, your hope is out. <laughs> I'm like, Huh? Because I had no clue. You didn't and even she know. Said I was, she was trying to tell me why I was on stage, but I never looked down. But you have bad vision. Maybe you wouldn't have saw her anyway. Yeah, I was not going to try to look nobody in their face. I never looked no, nowhere. I was looking straight ahead, but they were sitting under us, mm. just like the camera people were sitting under us. So mm. if you were sitting in front of us, can't see nothing, but right. you under me, you recording from like uh, a, it's a, a bad angle. It's a bad angle, yeah. So she saw it, and, and I, but I kind of brushed it off. I was like, oh, for real? And then I went to my seat, and we was me and her was like speaking to everybody, and then I checked my phone, and I seen it. And I told Carisha, I said that is so embarrassing, and she this don't not tell her none of your problems. <laughs> wow, how she just have a person that make it worse. <laughs> She looked at me and said, what? I was like, oh my God, Chris, this is so embarrassing. Because I was like frantic. I didn't even zoom in. I just mm-hmm. seen the panties. Mm-hmm. I mean, just seen the, like, the clip part. But I know I had on drawers. So I'm, I was like, damn, is my shit really out? So I said, Carisha, that's so embarrassing. She said, what's up? Ooh, that is. <laughs> I was like, bitch, what? Like, you ain't got to. Because I know what to say. You know, like, I'm the oh type of person. I'm like, for real, don't ever tell me your business. Like, I be like. Well, shit, what you doing? Like, I don't, I don't know. Like, I don't even know what to say. Yeah. And it's like, I always be like, okay, don't make it worse. You know, like, it to make it better. Sense. But it was like, at that point, I ain't want to lie. Like, I was just like, I'm going to just that be is. a friend and be like. <laughs> but then I'm going to think about it. I'm like, girl, that's your fucking bikini line. Yeah, yeah. I looked. And when I finally zoomed in, I noticed it was just my bikini line, a little mm-hmm. side look. Look, yeah, it like wasn't. Little, it was not. And then we we had an inside joke between each other. And when I said, huh, that was like, that that really made me feel much better because I was like, damn, if it would have been, that would have been. <laughs> like, so we laughed it off. And it was That's like, funny that Megan was the first person to tell you. Yeah, she was the first person to tell you. And then your your right hand here makes you feel way worse about it by saying, damn, that is. She was like, dead ass serious, like no laugh, no script. And she said, that is. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, oh my God, Christian, that is so embarrassing. She told me something. That is. Yes, I, I was like, okay. So then I'm like, maybe it's really a show. But when I went and zoomed in, I noticed it was my panties. And people just, like. They ran with it. Yeah, mm-hmm. of course. That's what kids do. The Billboard Awards was a very active night. Uh, we also saw somebody else there take an Instagram story and say that their baby daddy was hosting it. Mm-hmm. When things like that happen, why do you decide to even draw attention to those things versus just letting them? Because bitches want attention. You know how a person just keep poking you? Mm-hmm. So it's like, what's up, bitch? Yeah. I see you. Relax. You that's ain't that's nothing that's to address, so it's like, I see you. Relax. But Relax. why even feed in? Why not just let them, it, it, you know, if somebody's screaming to a forest, that, that's where it ends, you know? Why even latch on? Because bitches ain't no, like, bullies. Like, yeah, bitch, don't play with me. Like, like, nobody, we ain't, like, she ain't nobody to play with. So if she want to say something, she can say something. It's like she, the bitch gonna be forgotten tomorrow. She gonna still be on Miami, you know. Mm. She gonna still be yeah, it's just be like after a while. It's just like, girl, okay, relax. It's, it's you just doing too much. So. And then when people start to make music, and you say, I need my twenty percent. I need my twenty percent because if that nigga couldn't get you get you there, you had to use my face, baby. Pay me. Yeah. Period. You're you're owed something because you yeah. certainly put gasoline on that flame and and help make like it. Like I moment. do everything else. Like what? Anything you attach my name to, it's going to blow up. And it's viral. Mm -hmm. Okay. Speaking of names, JT, I've once heard you say that you will search people's names before you work with them. So, like, if if, uh, you're about to do something with 
X person, you'll search your name, you'll search Karicha's name, just to see if they've ever said anything mm -hmm. bad. Is that is that true? Is that something? Yeah, you do? I really do that. Like I really do that. I do walk that. Walk me through the walk me through the formula. Um, like if somebody like trying to like work with me, or I always be like, what's their Instagram? What's their Twitter? And I really go and I search it. Or if somebody's saying like talking shit about me, I go search my name, and you will see that people really have mixed emotions about you. Mm -hmm. Or like people will be down, hard down down to work with you, but you was just talking about me. <laughs> like, but I ain't tripping. I just do it. So let's say you search somebody's name on Twitter mm -hmm. and they say something a couple years ago, say something about, uh, bad about Carisha or Young Miami. Mm -hmm. Do you still work with them or no. is, it's over? No. I, don't, I, don't, I like, if, some, if somebody don't fuck with her, I don't fuck with them. Like, I don't really like that. Like, I just be, I be mad before her. Like, yeah, I she be, be real mad. I be mad for real. Like, I be <laughs> mad. And then she'll be dancing in the club. She's like, great, right, that's serious. I'm like, but I'm mad for real, so like. Yeah, she a real serious person. Mm -hmm. Well, it seemed like you were the more serious one on stage. When that's what I was saying. I'm, I'm like, I don't know. Like, that's what I was saying. I was like, <laughs> God damn, bitch, hold on. Because that was the serious ass moment, a serious ass place. That was, was a serious like, ass stage. It was glass. <laughs> and I, like, and I felt like it was live, and I just felt like, you know how like, that's how I felt for Coachella. Coachella, I was so fucking scared and nervous. I was backstage practicing, and in my head, I said, I don't know. I, I, I didn't remember nothing. Forgot it all. So when it was time for me to get out there, I said, oh my God, I feel like I'm gonna get up there and just like freeze up. And I did. So it was like one of the moments again where I wasn't nervous, but I just be feeling like I'm just forget. Yeah. So I was trying to be serious. But well, trying to be serious. Now, when it comes to serious matters, though, you're the one who gets more angry. Yeah, I'm learning to stop being, stop being like that though. Like for months, I've been trying to work on like it's not that serious. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of shit, I be like that I be you know, blew up about. Now I just be like it's not that serious. Life goes on, but yes, I be dead ass serious. I'm a Sagittarius though. I've heard you guys both collectively say this phrase right here: If you're talking to a guy, save your money and spend his. Talk to me about that mantra. Why? Why? should women save their money and spend the man's? I feel like a man is a provider. So I feel like if you're, if you're in a relationship, the man should, you know, be paying the bills and you do a little, you pick up some things, but you should be saving your money because a man is a provider. Even if they're just dating? Or is that marriage? Or at what point should the woman stop spending her own money and just begin spending it? The day we start talking. The day you start talking? Not even dating, just talking. The day we start dating. The day saying. you start dating. Mm. Okay. And, and are you aligned on this? Is it the day you start dating is when you, the women should stop spending their own money and, and spend? Yeah. I think that it, if you're in a serious relationship or you dating or whatever, like, I live with my boyfriend and... Yeah. yeah. He takes care of the house. Yeah. yeah. He, he takes very good care of the house. <laughs> he got to get dressed. <laughs> and go about my day. Like he has everything under control. He's a good man. So yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've also heard you once say that all men, to a certain degree, are insecure. Mm -hmm. It's something that you said once. Mm -hmm. It was. Uh, you may have said it in an interview. Or, okay. or do, you, do does that still hold the same resonance? Do you still feel that way? Are men all insecure to a certain degree? I'm gonna say yeah. I ain't so scary ass bitch. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like every man is insecure. I every, like I just, every man every is insecure. Man, yeah, every Especially man. when they really in love with you. They just, if, I, I, I don't know, like, I just feel like, I won't use the word insecure because maybe that'd be offensive, but just like overprotective and over, like, Don't worry about sensitive. being offensive. You JT, you got to talk your shit how yeah, you like, talk it. Men are like, they get very in their feelings about things to me that's not that serious. Mm -hmm. And I feel like sometimes I can be that way too. Like, um, it's the principle. Like, mm. don't play with me. So yeah, I feel like men are insecure about a lot of stuff. Okay, Miami, you say all men are insecure. How so? It's just insecure as fuck. Insecure. All. All of them. There's not one. No. Okay. So are you insecure? Yeah. Because you're trying to question it. Yeah. No, no, I'm just yeah. curious. I'm just, I'm just learning about, you know, this. I mean, I don't think I am. You are. I am. In what, in what ways do you see that? Or is this just an assumption? I just, I feel like every man is insecure. Like, it's not, 
like I got all type of friends. I be around women all the time, and it's always a problem with a man, whether they like rich, broke, every like it's just like it's always something. And I be like, these niggas really is insecure. Like y'all all, it's always something. Like it could be something about me. Y'all gonna make it about y'all. Like mm -hmm. it just like relax. This ain't got nothing to do with you. How it's falling back on you? Right. Like no. Okay. No, you gotta answer the question. Do I think all men are insecure? I would say no. I don't think all is a crazy thing to say because it's not. I can't say that every single man is. I think there are a large majority of men that are in denial about being insecure, mm -hmm. that they think they're not, but they are. Mm -hmm. But just the same goes for everybody, I think. I, don't, I wouldn't say all, though. Okay. I think y'all walk around with y'all chest out like y'all so cocky and like y'all just so, who, like, what's up? And then, like, just the slightest thing to break y'all down. It's like, damn, where that energy went at, mm. Mr. Cocky? Yeah. <laughs> like, Mr. What? Like One thing that I notice is uh, most men that you think of as these tough, chest out type of guys, when they in love, become a whole different type yeah, of person. Yeah, you turn niggas into a baby. <laughs> what is that like, watching this man with this image of toughness just kind of turn into a baby? Bitch ass nigga. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's <laughs> when you watch a man with a you know his chest out a real yeah, top? Yeah, I just came with this girl out today. <laughs> she took some bitch ass nigga. Oh my god, that seemed like it was that seemed personal. Yeah, that was you was waiting to get that out. <laughs> she was waiting to say that. It's like no, okay, you've you been ready to get that one out. Okay, it happened. <laughs> You was waiting to get that one out? Don't start no shit, won't be no shit. Ooh. And it came out, okay. okay. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> JT? How I feel about when I, I just like Or maybe you don't agree with that here, statement. Come here, baby. I rock my baby to sleep. I think that men, I think that when all men are with their woman, mm -hmm. they want their woman to love on them and like, give them that mother love, that love like that they can't find nowhere else in the mm. house. Like, Niggas be wanting a home. They be want to feel like yeah, they want to feel like they like they could pop they shit like they don't. But even when they running through all these women, they are looking for the one that's mm -hmm. gonna make them feel like they are safe or they are mm, talk to them. taken care of. Yeah, they say safe space. Like I know my bitch got me. Like mm -hmm. I know that's how my nigga feel about me. Is that something that you've seen that men are just looking for a home? Mm -hmm. That's interesting. A man is looking for a home. They want somewhere like she said. They comfortable. They could just. Sit there and relax. Self. They want to come home to a cook meal, like, you know, that motherly love. Do you feel like you guys both have that experience of being that person to somebody? Helping them find their home? Yeah, I did. But I'm F R E E fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> you say you're free? No, I say yeah, I did, but <clears throat> That shit come with a lot. You gotta like mentally be prepared for that. Like it's a lot to deal with a man, live with them, and just put up with that shit every day. It's a lot, but I have been that person. But um, you off that now? For a while, I got a great top thirty. Of, you know, I'm still about twenties right now. Okay, JT, how about you? That girl is a wife. Okay, I told you <laughs> she's a whole wife, right? I live with my man, like. I live with my man, and he don't get no home cooked meals because he don't even like my food. But he know I got him. <laughs> like, Why he don't like your food? You can't cook. Uzi a pescatarian and a very picky eater. Like, okay. He, he don't. You can't like do the shrimp alfredo. No, or... I do do the little fried fish shrimp alfredo for him, but he eat like a bird and he don't like my food. But like when he just want to make me feel good by myself, he will eat it. But he don't. But he like low key my food. don't like it. No, he don't like my. Can food. she cook? No. <laughs> I be trying. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be trying. If you had to give some tips on it, what what how can she be better at cooking? Is I don't it, know. She been cooking lately. Her food been looking good. She been calling people in. Yeah. Uh, she been making how banana she pudding. She got to cook. Oh, you can't cook either. She used to eat all my food, so. But based on the snack choices, I'm nervous about the food because mm -hmm. the delays was what your go-to snack is. One thing about it, two things for sure. If I cook, you gonna eat it. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. it, is it? It's hitting. I'm it's, a, I'm it's a, but you was eating it, though. I'm going to stand over you and make sure you eat my food. And <laughs> if you eatable. don't eat my food, you're done. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to fill away. It's eatable. Okay. If you're hungry. If you're hungry, it's something. It's passable. It's yeah, passable. It's passable. Yeah. That's it's all preventable. that matters. We just got to survive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you my really want to eat, you go out and yeah. you go to a nice restaurant. Mm -hmm. Survival. 
Our food is survivable. That's so yeah. funny. <laughs> wow. is, your, is yours better than survivable? I'm getting there in the pots. Like, I'm not going to lie. I'm really getting there in the pots. Like, I really, I learned how to cook macaroni and cheese. Now, I got to know how to cook macaroni and cheese. Now, I feel like I'm getting there in the pots. And he ate my food the other day, and I cooked a big old meal, and he was like, I appreciate the food. I was like, yeah, my food's good, <laughs> nigga, what? <laughs> if you guys were to check the scoreboard right now, who's up? The city, city girls, girls or the city, city boys? City girls, city always, girls up. always up. Always? Man. Yes. Don't be, don't, be, don't be crazy. No, when, when was the last time you guys remember a time when the city boys were up? I remember when the city oh, boys no. was up. When do you? When was that time when the city boys was I up? I remember. <laughs> oh my! Today. Today the city boys is up. <laughs> today, today was a wild day. When yeah, I today was a wild day. I will say today on the internet it looks like the city boys are up. Yeah. Why? Oh yeah, 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 it is. That's what we talk about. It looks like the city boys. Yeah, but the city boys is up. But it's about to be. It's about to be the summertime. So the city girls. We gonna see who really Wait, is. Is the lead gonna change? Oh yeah, the lead go go. Because right now it's a big margin, I'm not going to lie. City Boys feel like it's up a lot at this very no, second in time. No, it ain't that bad. No, no, it's... Then it's... the City Boys ain't up. Don't say that. I, 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 you just I admitted like only, that the City Boys is up. Only one little situation a day had the City Boys kind of looking up. But it's not really But it's up. not really like that. It's just like a little situation. It's a little blip. Yeah. It's a little blip. Okay, mm -hmm. and just in general though, forget today, in the grand scheme of things, City Girls still up? Yeah, in the grand scheme of things, I feel like the city girls are like in the overall. How you feel? City girls, are, <clears throat> city girls, always up. I don't ever feel like we take no L's. How does it feel knowing that you guys kind of spawned this friendly competition between city girls and city boys? Because obviously, city boys wasn't a thing in life, and now that it is because of y'all. JT, you rolling your eyes. Still not a thing. They just name themselves and just try it's, to get into something. Like, it's not a bad. thing. No. It's a lot of people proud to be a city boy, though. And they's losing. <laughs> they swear they up, though. But not the case. OK. There was a list of the top 50 female rappers, and you guys were not on it. And JT, you said, damn, y'all could have at least put us at 50. When you see a list like that and you guys aren't on it, what does that make you feel? I feel like. It was disrespectful. It wasn't disrespectful because of that list, because that list was some shit that a bitch made at their house. But that wasn't real. Like, I didn't care for it. I was just literally just joking. But I feel like a lot of times people would count us out. And I feel like we gave a lot of people their personality today. Mm. Like, I see it all the time. When people talk, like, I be like, that's us when we first came out still to this day. Like, people wasn't so in. Mm -hmm. And so they seen that from us. And I feel like a lot of times people tend to forget and try to discredit us credit us and say we make bad music and I never ever ever feel like that I feel like everything we put out is fun and it's, it's bop it's not conscious rap but I could definitely do a conscious rap but I feel like our music is you know for freedom and fun and mm -hmm. partying and and to make women feel good and to pop they shit so a lot of people call, don't say that it's real rap but music is to express yourself so you cannot never say what's real, real and what's, and what's fake. not real yeah like just expressing yourself and how you feel. If you sad, you make sad music. If you happy, you make a happy music. If you a bad bitch, you make bad bitch music. So mm. when they come to the city girls, they'll say, oh, they trash. They don't really rap for real. That ain't real rap. And it's like, nigga, I can really get out there and do a real rap. But it's like, this is my brand to mm -hmm. like uplift women. Now, when you guys look at the current landscape of hip hop, mm -hmm. do you feel like you can see your influences in it? because you've contributed so much in such a short amount of time to the game that there are obvious moments where even I, as a spectator of the game, can say, oh, that looks like it's influenced from them. How much are you guys able to notice that? See, when you say influence, a bitch, it just get, they're rough, it'll ruffle people's feathers, but it's the truth. People pick influence from different, it don't have to all come from mm -hmm. the city girls. Like I said, the period and the, the hand movement, it's like, that shit is like in people's, like that's how people, regular people even walk around like mm -hmm. that. Even when I see them talking to other girls, they could be talking to anybody. They be like, period, period, period. That is city girl shit. And that's what, that's influence right there. Mm -hmm. And people will act like they didn't bring nothing to the game, but we brought personality like, mm -hmm. to yeah. the game. Are you able to see the impact that you guys have had on the hip hop game? Even when it comes down to maybe even style or maybe jewelry? 
Yeah, yeah. I notice it. I see it all the time, but. In what ways do you notice it? Body language. Certain ways I take my pictures. Like, it, it's a lot. That doesn't bother you, though? It's not annoying to see when you're scrolling? It's very it's annoying, but it's like at the end of the day, people got to get out there. And they got to do what's best for them, and I say that. And they might as well follow a formula that works. Maybe? Yeah. I've seen you guys grow these chains that you have in jewelry pieces from just that small city girl's chain mm -hmm. that you got when you first signed to now, you know, bust down paddocks and Cubans and this and that. What's that kind of growth journey been like, turning that small chain into the things that you guys have now? I remember when I um, first got my biggest piece, like my big piece, somebody was, they was sneak this and they was like, that shit country as fuck. Bitches, girls shouldn't walk around with big jewelry like that. Girls shouldn't walk around with big jewelry like, you know, big, big mm -hmm. ass pieces like that. And now I see like all girls are wearing big pieces. I'm talking about our caliber. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about like the Cardi's and the Nicky's, mm -hmm. like, no. Just talk about like overall, and no, the rappers ain't said, but it became normal to do. Mm -hmm. Like the female rappers ain't say they don't want to wear it, but like regular people was like, girls shouldn't walk around with big ass chains on. Like that's country as fuck. That's corny as shit. Then when PPP hit, you got regular motherfucking bartenders <laughs> walking around with a motherfucking big ass chain with their name on it. I feel like a lot of normal girls take to the city girls. Like if mm -hmm. they, cause we give off, you know, like the around the way girls, normal girls. So when they see us do it, they want to do it too. Like normal girls. So yeah, the jury, the build up of the jury. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. Let's talk about some new music. I know that you guys have a new single with Usher that's on the way. What can we expect from that? I think it's like a fun cookout song. It's like very fun. It's, <laughs> it's very fun. Like it's a fun song. It's like cookout. Cookout vibes. JT? What she said. Cookout. Cookout vibes. Okay. And then. Like um, everybody can listen to it. It's like a song for everybody. It's a song for the two year old to the grandma to dance to. Does it feel like it's one of them ones? Does it feel like a. A, a similar feeling that you guys feel when you're putting out a song that goes out to be platinum? I think so. Yeah. Like, I personally love the song. Like, I think it's one of the ones. It's a very fun song. It's a different song, and it's just, it's, it's real fun. And I feel like it's perfect for the summertime. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, I know that you guys have an album on the way at some point. What's that progress been like working on this project? It's been hard. Why? I don't know. I feel like sometimes we like overthinking we overthink a lot like when we first came out we literally make a song and i not think nothing of it like now we just be like it got to sound perfect mm -hmm. yeah and it's just like you know it takes away from the fun like she said music's supposed to be fun you know what i'm saying i feel like once you start getting serious and just i think every artist go through that running mm -hmm. away from like, <laughs> I feel like every artist literally goes to that point when the when the fans start saying they miss the old you and then you get what I'm trying to say you get to your trying to get to your next project you want to impress your new crowd but you want to also impress your old crowd but after this we we literally are about to go to sound like to put our album together out right after this so I don't know like what she said it's just like it's stressful now because it's like what do you want from me mm -hmm. <laughs> like do you want the old me or do you want elevation of, mm -hmm. like, and growth or right. do you want to hear growth or do you want to hear or do y'all want to hear us from the very beginning. I feel like when you first come out, you have the whole floor to just be yourself and give them you. Mm -hmm. And then as time go, they want to hear the old you. They want to hear elevation. They want to hear versatility. Right. It's like, damn, what it's, do you How do? can I make y'all happy yeah. at this point? <laughs> right. Now, do you feel like a lot of times artists, they to a certain degree get jaded by success because when they have songs that become so big, they feel like every song they put out has to be of that big of a success or else maybe it's not a win. Do you guys feel that way? Is it like, damn, the last one was platinum, we gotta make sure that this next one is platinum and this next one is a hit? Me personally, I don't I don't be thinking like that. Like I just be looking for the fun in the music. Like whenever we make a song, I just be thinking like some shit you can hear in the club, some shit you can relate to, some shit you can, you know, if I'm getting dressed, I wanna put on that new city girls because I'm, I'm getting dressed, I wanna be hyped by the time I get in the car. Mm -hmm. I'm not thinking like, damn, do I think this one gonna go? Because that's when you get lost. You don't know what's gonna go. The mm -hmm. shit that you might think is trash might be, be the, the one. one. Go. So I feel like I don't think like that when it comes to music. I personally be thinking just for like clubs, having fun, and some shit that people could relate to. 
Okay. And is that the same mindset that you have? Yeah, I, I just, I put my whole career for real cruise control. Like, whatever happens, happens. Whatever don't, don't. Like, I, it was a point when I was stuck on the internet and I see flop and all that. And I used to get in my feelings and then I thought about it. I'm like, how the fuck? What does that even mean? So it's just like now, it's like put it out. Whoever it touch, it touch. Whoever it don't, it don't. It's, it's, and if it's go platinum, it go platinum. If it go gold, it go gold. If it go aluminum for you, it go aluminum for you. Lastly here, you guys just announced that you're going on tour with Jack Harlow, mm -hmm. who is one of the biggest in the game right now. How did that tour come together? Karate um, Awards, I had met him. And then he reached out to me to do the um, nail tech video. And then I guess we kind of like built a relationship from there. And then he wanted us to come on tour with him. From the Pussy Talk record, you know, like you said, we met him at Variety. And like he fucked with the movement. He wanted us to come on tour with him. Great. Mm -hmm. It seems like it would be exciting, but what do you think a show like that will look like? What can, we, what can the people expect? I just know that we're gonna bring the fun and I know we're gonna bring some, we're gonna bring you fun. And then I don't know what Jack Carla gonna do, but I know what the city girls gonna do and yeah. I know we're gonna get out there. And yeah. And do it. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all are so funny. Okay. Um, last thing here uh, Jack Harlow was just on Hot 97 and he did not know that Brandy and Ray J are siblings. Do y'all know that Randy and Ray J are related to each other? Mm -hmm. I'm old as hell. I know. But you knew that. This is like a common thing. Yeah. Because Jack was saying that he didn't, he had no idea. But how old is Jack Harlow? Like 26, maybe. Oh, he should know who Brandy is. He's supposed to know. Yeah, he's supposed to know. I'm thinking he like 21 or something. Nah. But if he like 26, like. You oh, gotta know. You gotta know that Brandy and Ray J is sisters and brothers at the age of 26. <laughs> so I'm thinking he just like a G G G Gen Z. Like, like that's a, when I thought too. Like I was like, maybe he didn't know, cause like a 19 year old, 20 year old, 21 year old probably don't know for know. real. Right. Cause that's more of our era. But um, if he's 26, he should know who Brady and Ray J is. Yes. Well, on tour, y'all gotta put him on game about things like that and things of our culture. He need to. He need to be on it. Check me on your ass. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know what can people look forward to from the City Girls uh, moving forward at this time? What can people expect? Real city girl shit. Authentic growth. Bad bitch energy. The city girls. The city girls. They <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the city girls. The city girls. Mm -hmm. They can expect the city girls. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. JT Young Miami, thank y'all for sitting down, and I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you for having me. Of course. <laughs>